Well, I'd like to introduce Tarn Bright from Home for Good. Thank you so much for coming, Tarn, and joining us. We're really thrilled to have Home for Good as our Christmas theme this season. So I wondered if you would start off with just telling us a bit about what Home for Good does. Thank you, Angela, and thank you uh, as well for inviting us. We love talking with churches. The church is at the centre of, of what we want to do, and that is to find a home for every child who needs one. Um, and we plan on doing that. Uh, through the families and the energy of the local church. Um, so at present, Angela, there are 8,600 children, young people needing foster care and over 3,000 children needing an adoptive placement. And so our job here at Home for Good is to quite literally inspire, equip and resource the local church, you, the local church, in order to provoke and to ask the big question, are there homes that we have of families within our churches who could open up their front door and create a stable and loving placement for a child or young person that would change the future for them and would create an environment for them whereby they're celebrated and not tolerated. Um, and so Home for Good has a big remit therefore, um, but uh, one that we are super excited about. And so absolutely, again, thank you for inviting us to talk. And just tell us a little briefly, uh, sort of what is Christmas like for um, those children who are in foster care or in adopted placements or even waiting for those things? Yeah, Angela, you know, it's a it's a really testing time, Christmas, isn't it? For most of us, yeah. you know, for those of us who are in relatively stable family units, there's pressures. Things are magnified in a way where they perhaps aren't during the rest of the year. And if we can only just imagine what that must be like for a foster child or an adoptive child, whereby they sense, they know that there is something other for them than what that construct is that they are currently with, that they know that they've experienced something before that hasn't been right. Children go into care nowadays, Angela, for all sorts of reasons, but it's not like the 1960s or 70s where children were relinquished. Children in our care system now, as you well know, are there because of trauma, abuse and neglect. So at Christmas time, when all the carols are playing and the sort of utopia of perfection is in the air, let's recognise that that, that that must be very, very provocative emotionally for a child or young person who recognises that they're not with their biological family. Um, has there been a special focus for Home for Good's work this year um, in the pandemic? Well, yes, I, I guess two key focuses, Angela. One is, you know, we ran some emergency campaigns uh, in certain regions across the country. Mm. Uh, the plight was so great in terms of the increased need of foster carers particularly. And so with our emergency campaigns, Lewisham and Bristol and others, we were able to again rally the local church into, into being the local church in all of her glory. But also is that we identified Angela at Home for Good that there was real racial disparity in the care system. Mm -hmm. And we identified that black children, particularly black boys, were most likely to never achieve permanency in either a foster placement or an adoptive placement. And that they were also overrepresented in the care system. Mm -hmm. When we saw those figures, Angela, it, it, it did something, well, particularly to me, at justice a level, a bit teary. at a heart level. Mm. I utterly recognised that this was an issue of injustice. Mm. So we have spent the last couple of months writing an open letter to Gavin Williamson, the Secretary of State, who is overseeing the care of you, to ask, to plead, mm. to absolutely <laughs> insist yeah. that there is real effort put now into bringing parity back into this and that black children should not be those waiting the longest. How do you see God moving in the local churches and what makes you hopeful for 2021? Because we need some hope. Oh, we do, don't we? <laughs> what was staggering, Angela, was that uh, through the pandemic, uh, these, these last nine, 10, 11 months, we anticipated that there would be a reduction of inquiries into mm. our um, inquiry team. Mm. The opposite has happened. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> now that tells me one thing, that this is God's business. Mm. And we have had over 1,600 inquiries for people interested in being foster carers or adoptive parents when we have been least active in terms of our public availability. 
and that is through a pandemic so do I have hope my gosh absolutely but just remains to wish you a calm and peaceful Christmas (laughs) there's no such thing (laughs) bless you and um I pray a blessing over you and your family um, and uh, your church and all those that you're engaged with, Angela. May the Lord bless you and his face shine upon you. And uh, thank you for doing this with us.